Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary. It's time once again to work on our Plants vs. Zombies Cross Vampire Survivors mashup which, if you've been following along, has been a much smoother experience than expected. The last time we managed to add even more plants with unique features to the game, including stun and slow debuffs, as well as the absolute destruction of everything on screen. Good times. So good in fact, my confidence in the project continues to grow, possibly jinxing us in the process. Regardless of that danger, however, we still carry on with even more unique additions. And before we begin, if you enjoyed today's video, remember to leave a like, and if you're new, be sure to subscribe so you never miss a new episode. So first, let's talk the Torchwood. Interestingly, because our plants aren't officially objects, I had to get a little creative with the Torchwood's interactivity with projectiles. So instead of collision checks, distance checks would be used. And if a projectile happens to be a P, it's updated to a flaming P. For now, there's no difference between the two outside of visuals, but now the distinction at least exists. Moving on to the spike weed, which had similar challenges as the torch would. To detect enemies stomping on our spiky friends would require a distance check, and when an enemy is close enough to be considered stepping on the spike weed, that enemy and the spike weed both take damage. Which is, uh, at least as far as I can remember, quite similarly, if not exactly how it works in Plants vs. Zombies. But if it's wrong, be sure to let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's keep this train of odd plants going with the Hypno Shroom. So, for the time being, this plant shares the same code as the Walnut. However, the Hypno Shroom has 1 HP and special death code. Before deleting itself, the Hypno Shroom creates a collision circle, and any enemies caught in that circle are then temporarily turned into an ally. And while in that state, the enemy will begin to target and attack other enemies. Now, because GameMaker is uh, kinda weird, a new function was created in order for the enemies to find other enemies that aren't themselves. Because otherwise, they would just attack themselves, which would be kinda funny, but you know, also kind of redundant. Also, I realized the Hypno Shroom is originally meant to affect just the enemy that eats it. However, I think that allowing for the plant to affect multiple units instead of just one makes it more useful. But as always, we can change things if that doesn't end up working. Next, let's talk to Cattail. This little lily kitty is pretty standard in terms of plant behavior. However, as PVZ veterans know, their projectile is what makes them unique. A cattail projectile will find the nearest enemy unit to its position and slowly turn towards its direction, thus creating a homing effect. And of course, cattails are then coded to only be placeable on lily pad tiles. The code for which looks a bit different now thanks to some things that we'll get to in a bit. But indeed, this now meant that cattails could be placed on water tiles once they are converted into lily pad tiles. Also, for what it's worth, the cattails are the few projectile based plants that cannot be picked up by the player. Anyway, the next three additions are going to be lumped into one, and they cover the evolutions or uh, upgradable plants. For the pea shooter, it's the repeater and the gatling pea, and for the sunflower, it's the twin sunflower. Now, in terms of behavior, they are on par with their PVZ versions. The repeater fires two peas, the gatling pea fires four, and the twin sunflowers produces twice the amount of sun per cycle. Basically, beefed up versions of their previous iterations. Where things got interesting, and albeit quite stressful, was the placement code. Up until recently, the placement code simply checked for the empty spaces, followed by tile checks for lily pads, grave busters, and so on. So upgrading a plant complicated things, requiring a large amount of reworking of the code. As a result, two functions were added. First, a function to determine if evolution is even possible, for example, pea shooter to repeater, repeater to gatling pea, and so on. The second function is a general check for all plant types with specific placement requirements. These changes now somewhat streamline the checks for things like grave busters, but but also evolution plants like the twin sunflowers, which themselves simply delete the old plant and replace them with the evolved form. I am secretly hopeful that this is the last time that the code will have to be touched because it was quite a complicated rework. So with that, let's end with a bang and some spice with the jalapeno. For now, the jalapeno uses the same exact behavior code as the cherry bomb, the only difference being in the explosion event, unlike the cherry bomb which uses a collision circle to determine its blast radius, the jalapeno uses a collision line, one that extends four or so tiles in both horizontal directions. Now yes, this means that the jalapeno now requires a bit more precision given it's a line and not a rectangle. Well, truth be told, it was originally going to be a rectangle, however, for some odd reason, the rectangles don't register. Not exactly sure why, 
but I'm not entirely disappointed either with the alternative. Now, it may be more precise, but given its reach, still makes it more viable, especially when used in a crowd. And that was all I was able to get through this session, roughly 8 new additions, which isn't too shabby. There are only a few remaining unique plants left to add, so soon we'll be able to start tweaking things and adding more Vampire Survivors flair to the experience. And I'll echo the sentiment from last time, this uh, worked out surprisingly well, and I'm really interested to see what we can do with the other aspects moving forward. I mean, the fact that enemies can now attack from any angle really throws a core aspect of plants vs zombies for a loop. Like not being able to reliably control a horde because it doesn't adhere to like strict lanes is showing both pros and cons. Not to mention, we haven't even touched aquatic and aerial enemy variants. Anyway, that's just what I think. I'd love to know what you think of all these additions and changes, so be sure to leave them in the comments. I'm also now on Patreon if you would like to further support the channel. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.